Hi, I'm Roger Montgomery from Montgomery Investment Management. In this video, we're going to update the steps and procedures for estimating intrinsic value using the formulae available in my book, Valuable. Now, the first time we did this was on the National Sky Business Program back in February 2011. And applying the formulae to Woolworths, we arrived at an estimated intrinsic value of $23.36. Now that compared to the then share price of $26.42. The share price subsequently fell through to October 2011 to almost the estimated intrinsic value, about $23.58 at its low point, before subsequently rallying, subsequently falling again, and then rallying to where we are today. Today, we're going to update the estimate of intrinsic value for Woolworths, remembering that one of the big changes that's occurred over the last 10 years is a significant decline in interest rates. Back in our 2011 calculation of intrinsic value for Woolworths, we applied a discount rate of 10%. We won't be doing that today. The first step is to look at the quality of the company. And back in 2009, 2010, uh, we knew that Woolworths was a very high quality business. And it's demonstrated in this table here, you can see there's been an almost eightfold increase in profits between the year 2000 and 2009. And there's been about a five-fold increase in the equity to drive that increase in profit. Consequently, the return on equity has improved. In fact, over that nine year period or thereabouts, for every dollar that's been invested in equity in the business, the business has generated roughly a 27% return on that additional dollar. And so this is what appears to be a very high quality business. Now there's also been a rather significant increase in debt over the period being described. Uh, but of course, because the company uh, generates very high cash flows, uh, and in fact, it's working capital generates cash, uh, this business has no problem paying off uh, any debt that it accumulates or, or assumes. So back in 2009 or 2011, using the 2009 data, when we conducted this particular exercise, it was clear that Woolworths is a very high or was a very high quality business. And we went on to calculate intrinsic value on that basis. Updating the information since 2009, we can see a number of things have transpired. The first is that equity has continued to be invested in the business, primarily through retained earnings. About $1.4 billion has been added to the equity on the balance sheet. But the profits haven't risen despite that increase in equity. In fact, the profits have declined slightly. Now here I'm using the 2021 profits because of course 2020 profits are affected by COVID probably not a typical year uh, for Woolworths. Uh, so I've used the 2021 numbers, and if we use 2022 numbers, uh, we would probably find that they've improved slightly. But regardless, over the last 11 years or thereabouts, there has not been an improvement in the profit of this business. So that puts into question whether or not it's as high quality as it once was. It's certainly still a very high quality business, but we question whether or not it's as high quality as it once was. The return on equity has declined, and that's important to note, and the debts roughly stayed about the same. The first step in calculating an estimate of intrinsic value is to collect this information. We need the shares on issue, we need the shareholders equity, which is the assets minus the liabilities or what's been put in and what's been left in the company. We need to calculate the return on equity, uh, which is comparing the profit to shareholders' equity, uh, and we need to calculate the, oh, we need to see the earnings per share and the dividends per share, because what we're going to do is calculate a payout ratio and the proportion of profits that are retained to be compounded within the business. And then we need to assume an investor's required return. And of course, because interest rates have declined so much, it's probably no longer practical to use a 10% required return. And here in this example, we've reduced it to 5%. Remembering that this is a relatively stable business and still a high quality business, 
uh, a 5% required return is probably reasonable. So in calculating the measurements that we need to go into our formulae for estimating intrinsic value, step A is to calculate uh, the equity per share. So what we do there is we take the shareholders equity and we divide it by the number of shares on issue. And that comes to $7.30 per share. The next step is to calculate the payout ratio. So we take the dividends per share divided by the earnings per share and you can calculate an average over many years to work out what the average payout ratio is. For our exercise, we're going to use 74%. And the next step is to estimate or calculate rather the return on equity. And again, this can be an average over a period of time or you can compare the profits of the most recent year or next year to the average equity. Here, we're just going to look at the earnings per share divided by the equity per share and we arrive at 20% return on equity. Uh, and then what we're also going to do at the end is simply choose a required return. And as I mentioned a moment ago, we're going to use 5%. Now, step A is to select the income, the appropriate income multiplier, which we're then going to apply to the equity per share. So using these extended tables, taking into account the decline in uh, interest rates over a period of time, if we line up the 20% return on equity estimate with the 5% required return, we arrive at an income multiplier of four. If we then look at the table uh, 11.2, uh, we need to uh, extract or select the growth multiplier. So this will be uh, the multiplier that we apply to the equity uh, per share of the business to work out what the estimate of intrinsic value would be if the company actually retained and compounded all of its profits. And in this case, that number is 9.849. So that's where we line up the 20% return on equity with the 5% required return using the growth multiplier uh, from 11.2 in Valuable. Then the next step is to simply apply those multipliers to the equity per share. So to the $7.30 of equity, we first apply the income multiplier of four and we arrive at $29.20. This is the estimated intrinsic value should the company re, uh, pay out all of its earnings as a dividend. Step two is again to apply a multiplier to the equity per share. In this case, the, multi the growth multiplier to the equity per share of $7.30 and we arrive at $71.90. This would be the estimated value of Woolworths if the company retained and compounded all of its profits at 20% per annum or thereabouts out for forever. Now clearly that's an unrealistic uh, assumption and so the intrinsic value for Woolworths is not $7.90, $71.90. It's also not $29.20 because we know that a proportion of the profits of Woolworths is in fact retained and compounded, uh, provided of course it continues to uh, do that, uh, then the intrinsic value would be higher than $20, $29.20. And so the reality is that the intrinsic value of, or the estimate of intrinsic value for Woolworths lies somewhere between these two numbers because it retains some of its profits for growth uh, and it pays out the majority of its profits to its uh, shareholders as a dividend. In order to work out precisely uh, what the estimate should be or what we think the estimate is, what we then do is we then multiply the income multiplier result by the payout ratio and we multiply the growth multiplier result by the retained ratio. So if we take that $29.20, which you'll remember is the estimate of intrinsic value for Woolworths if all of the profits were paid out as a dividend, and instead we multiply it by the proportion of profits that actually are paid out as a dividend, 74%, we arrive at $20.44. The next step, is to do the same thing, but uh, apply the retained ratio, one minus the payout ratio, 26%, to the estimate of intrinsic value 
if all of the profits were retained and compounded, which of course they're not, only 26% of the profits are retained. And so if we uh, multiply $71.90 by 26%, we end up with $18.69. The final step is to actually add those two numbers together. So if we add the $20.44 to the $18.69, we arrive at an estimated intrinsic value of $39.13. Now, a couple of points about that estimate of intrinsic value. The first thing you'll note is that it's below the current share price. And so that means that the share price is currently slightly expensive compared to this particular estimate of intrinsic value. The other thing that you have to remember is a, is a couple of points. Number one, we've used a very low required return. If bond rates start to rise, then intrinsic value starts to fall because the discount rate or the required return we would apply goes up. And remember, interest rates act like gravity on the intrinsic value of companies. In other words, as interest rates go up, the required return goes up, and so the estimate of intrinsic value, which is the product of the formula, falls. So keep that in mind. The other thing that you'll note is that implied in this estimate of intrinsic value is that the company retains 26% of its profits and compounds that or grows that. But what you'll notice, what you'll remember rather, is that over the last 10 years, Woolworths hasn't grown its profits. So you might apply a greater discount rate than 5% to come up with a more conservative estimate of intrinsic value for Woolworths, taking into account the possibility that it doesn't grow its profits as quickly as it has, uh, as is being implied uh, by the intrinsic value formula. So the current estimate based on the numbers that we've put in is $39.13. I would apply uh, a higher discount rate and I would assume that less of the profit is able to be retained and uh, compounded. Uh, that would both of those things would result in a slightly lower uh, estimate of intrinsic value uh, for Woolworths using the valuable formula. Finally, I will say that there are many, many different ways of calculating intrinsic value, and some of them we use here at Montgomery Investment Management. So don't tie yourself to one formula, look at multiple estimates of intrinsic value, apply a conservative discount to that intrinsic value, and over the long run, you should do well as a value investor. With that, thank you for the lesson. Uh, I look forward to providing another update in a decade's time uh, and uh, we'll look at Woolworths again. Until then, see you soon and uh, stay in touch.